how was your holiday? Ah, all right, I suppose. I suppose? Well, uh, I feel like people ask me about it, to be honest. Yeah, you do. I'm just the same thing over and over. Yeah. I'll tell you what, I'm going to need to hold you soon if things carry on like this. Why? What's happening? Frank and Dan. World War III is about to break out. Oh, dear. Mm, I'm duck to avoid the crossfire. <laughs> Isn't it lovely to see Ricky cheering up a bit now, eh? Mind you, anything's an improvement, you know, after the old dog that's been kicked at. Yeah. He's doing all that. Yeah, I mean, you've got to admire the boy, yeah. Picks himself up, keeps soldiering on. What else are you going to do? Yeah, exactly. When you're not the brightest guy in the world. Just hang on a minute here, I'll have you know he's going to college. Look, <laughs> he's going to college. What's that, the proof of you can do it as well? There's nothing wrong with a boy trying to improve himself. First in the family to read a mile. <laughs> Sorry about that, guys. That's No, but Frank, he's loving my father ever. Has he got a girl yet? None of your business. No, no, I'm not having a pop at him. I, you know, I wish him every success there is. Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm sure you do. No, I do, and I do worry about him. And, I mean, look, if he needs any pointers on where we went wrong last time, I'd be more than happy to help. You know that. I mean, after all, I heard from the officer's mouth, didn't I? Well, make sure this customer gets you drink. I need to work with my partner. <laughs> I'm just trying to be helpful, mate. You lay off, Ricky. He's worth ten of you. And as for me and you getting along... Yeah, I got a message, mate. Then we both know where we stand. Yeah, you just remember one thing, yeah? I try to be reasonable now. Reasonable? Reasonable? When you haven't even got a right to be here in the first place? We've all been through this, Frank, haven't we? Me and Peggy have worked hard all our lives for what we've got. What, are you saying I ain't? Really? What you got to show for it? I've been unlucky, that's all. Oh, my heart bleeds for you. Frank, you're a two-bar car salesman, mate. You've had a right touch being in the first place, yeah. I didn't weasel my way in through the back door. It was a break. I don't deny that. But you tell me why I shouldn't take advantage of it. With your track record. Look, I've learned a few things along the way. Oh, we're all well aware of your skills, damn boy. Using people. Wrecking families. Spare me the lecture, Frank, will you? Hey? Because if Peggy got on better with her loving son, we wouldn't even be standing here right now, would Don't we? Don't you dare mention that woman's name. She's in a sick bed because of you. Well, if she can't stand the pace, maybe she should retire. We'll retire when it suits us. I can have you out of here in five minutes. <laughs> I know about your little car games. And where would Peggy's precious license be, eh? If it came out that there was illegal gambling on the premises. Well, let me tell you something, mister. You'll never be the licensee here. I'm whispering the right ear about your liking for teenagers. Oh, come on, mate. And while we're on the subject, I see you even looking at my... Oh, credit me with some taste, will ya? I've got to fire off like every other bloke that walks through that door. I tell you what, Frank, you did a blinding job bringing her up. 